This video is brought to you by Squarespace. In this video, I'm gonna show you a sushi omakase course for less than $100. So we're back with another episode of Hold My Miso, where I take you on an adventure of hidden spots and gems in Tokyo. So a lot of people in the comments always ask me, where's a good sushi spot here in Tokyo where I can have lunch? So in this video, I'm gonna actually show you as part of this series. And one thing that's nice about this place is that you can actually have a full course omakase sushi lunch for less than a hundred dollars. So one of the things about omakase sushi courses is that they're quite expensive, especially at dinner time. So one of the things that I like to do is go during lunchtime, you get the same exact sushi, but for a more affordable price, which is pretty awesome. But before I start, if you want to see what I'm doing on the daily, check out my Instagram account. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Japan merch. And if you want to connect with people who love Japan or you have questions about your travel to Japan, check out my Discord community. And that all said, somebody hold by Miso because I'm going to take you on a hidden food adventure. Just a few minutes walk from Higashi Ginza Station, I'm taking you to today's lunch spot, Sushi Ginza Onodera. Onodera is a sister restaurant to New York and LA's Michelin star shops, and this Ginza shop is a must visit destination if you're looking for a delectable sushi omakase course experience. The head chef has 31 years of experience, with many of those years spent in Hokkaido honing his craft, so it's no surprise that the ingredients used at Onodera are picked from Hokkaido Market in addition to Toyosu Market. Course comes in several different price ranges 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, and 13,000 yen. So you get to really, really decide. Now, if you get the most expensive course, then you're actually gonna get the sushi. On top of that, you'll get some sashimi and some appetizers on the side. But today, since we wanna keep it all under $100, we're gonna go for the 10,000 yen course. After he takes my order, he prepares the netta, which are the ingredients that are placed on top of the sushi rice. He takes the fish from the wooden boxes and delicately cuts it into calculated portions so neither the netta or rice overwhelm each other, creating that perfect sushi combination. Just looking at the master work has my mouth watering. And so the first course that we get is this chawan mushi. You can see that it has some ikura in there. Oh. You can see all of the salmon roll in there. That looks so good. Ooh. That is quite creamy and the chawan mushi is kind of like, like an egg pudding. The salmon roe really pops. It gives you that like savoriness and the dashi that they use is really nice. It's like simply a beautiful dish. This is starting off to be a great meal. For the first nigiri, I'm served a white fish, hirame, also known as flounder. This is the hirame, this is our first bite. Mm. That fish is so fresh. You can taste that the shoyu that was painted on there it has kind of like a citrusy taste. I think he actually sprinkled a little bit of lime on there. Oh, that's beautiful. So this is maguro. And you can see that they put again the same sauce to it. The rice is actually a little bit reddish. It's not like, like a straight white. From what I hear is that it actually uses like an akazu, which means kind of like a red vinegar to help flavor the rice. tuna just melts in your mouth. You can taste all of the oils and all of that just melting on your tongue. Served next is squid, seasoned with salt and a dash of lime. Wow, does that look good. You can see it glistening right there. Mm. Mm. That's nice, it has that like lime citrus taste as well to it. It just goes down so smoothly. Literally the fish is so fresh here. Next is katsuo, skipjack. Accented on top with a gyoja garlic from Hokkaido. Seasoned with the shop's original soy sauce. So this beauty is katsuo. Let's take a bite of this. It's 
everything just goes down so easily. It's like you almost don't even eat any of the fish because it just melts so quickly into your mouth. Next is Torigai. The chef slightly grills the surface and scores it lightly and then seasons it with salt and lime drops. And this Kai is actually from Hokkaido. It almost has like a crunchy outside and kind of like a soft inside. They've actually sprinkled some salt on top of it so it kind of has that savoriness. But overall like it has like a really really interesting texture. Um, it's not like the fish that it generally just like melts in your mouth. More kind of like a smooth, more playful texture. But what I love is it's like each bite you have or each sushi you have is like a different experience altogether. Before we continue I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today, Squarespace. Squarespace is the spot to create your online presence. If you guys don't already know, I use Squarespace to build my own website, Tokyo Zebra. In fact, Squarespace has uniquely awesome templates, making it easy to start. And better yet, they have some pretty awesome tools to help you along the way. For example, they have portfolios and galleries to display all of your projects. And Squarespace has powerful blogging tools to tell your story, share your updates, photos, and videos. And if you're an analytics nerd like me, you can see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time, helping you to build a better website as you go. So check out squarespace.com today for your free trial and when you're ready to launch and go to squarespace.com forward slash paolo from tokyo and get 10% off your first domain or website so this is their honmaguro and what you've actually probably noticed already is that you don't actually have soy sauce but they've actually put the soy sauce on for you so like you have the perfect amount and like how they want you to actually eat let's have a bite of this oh. Holy crap, that's good. I love how kind of like meaty that piece was. I feel like you got a hearty piece of maguro. And in between the rice and the sushi, they actually put like a yuzu, which kind of like is like very citrusy. So the next piece here is aji. Kind of, they call it in Japanese hikarimono, meaning that it's kind of like silverfish. Um, I'm not too much of a fan with silverfish because usually it's um, fishy, um, especially at the really, really inexpensive places. So let, let's see how this is. So silverfish is really hard to prepare because what you'll find is that if it's not prepared very well then it'll be like really really fishy but this one was not fishy at all. It was just really really tasty. You can, you can taste all the flavors for your fish and I can do definitely more of that. It's so good. This is Negitoro at its most splendid version. You saw them when they were preparing it. It was like kind of like a ball of like minced tuna. You can just see it glistening off the lights. See it's consuming all of the rice right now. That is just beautiful. Oh. Wow. That is smooth. That is so buttery. Literally, you do not have to chew at all, but that just like slid down my throat. There's just so much oil in it. It feels like you're having sushi butter. <laughs> that could be one of my favorite so far. This is a yellowtail zuke, which is quite rare. And instead of using wasabi, the chef uses a Japanese mustard called wagarashi. That's nice. That's a hearty cut. Usually you, know, you would get the wasabi, but now you get like the mustard. Definitely an interesting taste. And I just love how they cut it in like a really, really thick piece. So this is kasugo, which is a Thai fish. And in fact, very rare fish. And that's like the whole point of coming to these kind of places is because you get fish that you normally don't get. And just inside, they actually have this. So this is called ebi no oboro and crumbled ebi. And you can see this is actually inside between the fish and the rice. Let's take a bite. Mm. 
Oh, the almond tastes a little bit more like a silverfish, but it has that interesting flavor of the ebinoboro. A little bit of like a shrimp flavor kind of crumbled. Almost has like kind of like a cheese texture to it. That's interesting. And I'm looking down right now and they have some karuma ebi just sitting on a plate in front of me. And you can see that it's still moving. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the shrimp that was just alive a few minutes ago. Basically it's half cooked. They cooked it partially just to give it that orangish whitish color, but it's still super fresh. That's insane. That's really good. You can tell that the ebi itself was just kind of like half cooked. It wasn't fully cooked just to like have that fresh flavor. And in between the rice and the fish, they actually had brain parts of the actual shrimp. So they call it um, ebi miso here in Japan. What's also nice is that Michael can't really eat raw shrimp. She just told him I can't eat raw shrimp. And so what they did was they actually prepared it and they grilled it for her and kind of gave her a different look and a different taste all together. A lot of these omakase places when you come here for the first time, they're really good about kind of serving you what you can eat. Basically they'll ask, you know, what are you allergic to or what you can't eat. You just tell them and then they'll just make sure that they don't prepare that specific seafood for you so that you can enjoy the full course. And here's some enga. Oh, it's dripping with some of that. I'll show you that they painted on so lightly. Mm. That angle is very, very unique. It has like, kind of like a nice crunchy texture to it, but it's not like a dry crunch. It's like a very moist and wet crunch. Very, very interesting and unique texture. Really like biting into something that's like pops with flavor. So this is Nodo Guro, also known as a black throat fish. You can see that it's been grilled on the top. Just, just have a bite. That could be my favorite so far. The texture that was really soft and moist in the center, but it had that like kind of flame torched, grilled, kissed by the heavens outer skin layer. Oh, beautiful. So we got some uni from Hokkaido, the Hakodate area. So the chef uses a purple sea urchin, which has long spikes and yellowish meat. The taste is lighter and more elegant compared to the buffoon sea urchin. Mm. It's a very like sprite uni, like some of the uni is like really really sweet, whereas this one is super alive and like springy. That's insanely delicious. The course is finished off with egg, which has a unique cake-like texture, almost like a dessert. And for dessert, coconut cream topped with matcha sauce. All right, so that concludes the second video of Hold My Miso. If you like these type of videos, help me out and hit that like button. If you wanna see what I'm doing on the daily, check out my Instagram account. If you wanna help support the channel, check out the Japan merch. And if you wanna see more of these videos, my Japan guides or my day in the life videos, hit that subscribe button and the bell button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.